Hi there, my name is Lorna Selig and I'm with Autism Calgary. Welcome to the New Horizons for Seniors Conversation. I'm going to introduce to you today two fascinating gentlemen, Paul and Kevin. They're going to share their story and a little bit about their journey through life. They've spent many, many, many years of their lives with little or no knowledge about why they thought differently, why the world looked differently to them. Today, we're going to have a conversation with them. I hope you'll find it as fascinating as I have. Awesome. Well, welcome, gentlemen. We're so, so glad you're able to uh, join us here this evening. We've got Paul and we've got Kevin um, today with us. Thank you so much um, for joining us. We want to talk with you a little bit about your experiences um, and we want to hear a little bit about your story, what, um, what you do, how you do it, and what life looks like for you. Either, either you want to start? Go ahead, Paul. That's a very general place to start. <laughs> For work, I'm an application development project manager with the city, and uh, so my job is to figure out application requirements and to uh, run the team that that either puts in the the off-the-shelf application or uh, builds it from scratch okay and so you're a techie guy absolutely I've been since I was little okay <laughs> shop, shop. awesome got, got our first computer when I was five and uh, it was an Apple II not a 2E or R or anything just straight two and yeah I like them yeah they good do what for they're you told. <laughs> yeah, right? It's black and white, ones and zeros. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good for you. And Kevin? Uh, these days I'm a building operator. Okay. Senior building operator, yeah. officially. Um, I operate buildings, deal with contractors, mm -hmm. take care of tenants, uh, work on automation. Uh, I'm also a tradesman, although I don't do that anymore. I'm a refrigeration mechanic, okay. power engineer. And yeah. Other stuff like that. Sir. Yeah. Sir. Married kids? I'm married. I've got uh, three kids, uh, three grandkids. Um, oh, fun. Yeah, I've done all the stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's pretty interesting. But yeah, the job I have now is quite relaxing compared to the stuff I did before. Uh, so I like it, you know. Awesome. Good for you. How long have you been doing that kind of work? Well, seven years at this job. Okay. Before that, I was at Stampede for 17 years. I was the chief engineer there. Okay. And uh, that was a lot bigger job. Um, a lot more stressful, but, okay. you know, it prepared me for for this. Like, it doesn't matter what happens anymore. Nothing is stressful. So. Isn't that funny yeah. when, when, as you get older, you kind of have a bit of a different, ah, it's okay, it'll all work out, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it always does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And how about you, Paul? You you have a family? Yep. Yeah, yep. I've been uh, been married twice. I have one son with my first wife and two a son and a daughter with my second wife. Okay. And I've got one of them is an adult now and two are just becoming teenagers. Oh wow. So that's uh, that's no end of busy, is it? It's a little busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little busy and all three yeah. are or also have autism diagnosis. Okay. Mm. And how uh, how old were they when you learned of their diagnoses? Um, my oldest was just coming up to the end of high school. Okay. Although I suspected for a good 10 years at that point, or okay. nearly 10 years. And uh, my youngest two were, I think, three and four. Okay. Maybe four and five, yeah. but somewhere in there. And so you say they have um, autism diagnoses. Do they um, do they attend typical school? Do they? Yep. Yeah. Yep. My daughter. Okay. My daughter goes to Westmount. Yeah. And which is a gifted charter school. Yeah. And she's doing really well there. Great. And my son is hugely into hockey. 
mm-hmm. and has been playing since he was seven. What position does he play? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. He changes his mind every year. <laughs> yeah, wow. And uh, and he goes to regular school as well. Okay. And uh, yeah, they do really well in school. They're, he's doing really well on his hockey team. That's good. Team environment's been yeah. fantastic for him. So. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, my oldest went through regular school all through his school career as well. That's but great. in small towns, mostly. Okay, yeah, good. That's good. And they're adjusting and, and friends and doing their thing, are they? Yep. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, my son finds it a little easier than my daughter, but he's... Okay. He's different than she is so. yeah yeah well and kids are right they're all mm. how about your kids my kids Kevin, are they <clears throat> what do they do well are they well my daughter um she works i forget what company it is now but she does a lot of uh, training stuff mm-hmm. um she's a whiz with computers yeah yeah first time I ever saw her she was like just like wow. so fast and the stuff's going up the screen like in a movie but she's uh, done all kinds of stuff like that uh, worked for Alberta Healthcare and ADCO okay. and she did work in the US military stuff um, mm. yeah um, my other son uh, is manager of a big hotel downtown mm. and uh, then the other son is a heavy equipment operator a landscape uh, guy foreman um, Plus, he did power engineering, same like I did. Neat. So they, they're all quite successful, which is good. Makes me. It's happy. always a relief for as a parent, right, to know that these humans that you brought into the world are kind of productive and self-sufficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Are they actually, um, in a lot of ways, more successful than myself? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I did achieve. Quite a bit, so I, I'm happy about that's that. Awesome. But yeah, they're all, they're great kids. Yeah, that's neat. That's good. And grandbabies, that's fun too. Oh yeah. They're, well, they're not so much babies anymore. No. No, the one's got her learner's license. And, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've she's already driven around in our cars, and we have a place oh, out God. in the bush, and yeah. she drives the truck out there. And, uh, yeah, they're growing up. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So both you gentlemen received uh, a diagnosis of autism at some stage. How? What? What's your story in and around that, Paul? Well, for me, it, it came uh, came with my children's diagnosis because mm-hmm. they, they all three came right at about the same time. Right? Right. There's a big gap in age between my, my oldest and my, my middle ones mm-hmm. or my younger ones, and uh, <clears throat> so we started. Looking into autism as a diagnosis with my youngest, who had a profound speech delay. Mm. He was in the first percentile for speech. He couldn't hardly speak at all at age three. And uh, so we had him assessed, and he came up with an autism diagnosis. Mm. And then our pediatrician had seen my daughter, I guess, who was kind of a the same appointments because they were little and he said you know <laughs> we might want to take a look at her too yeah and she went through a diagnosis pro- diagnostic process as well and mm-hmm. she um, she turned out on the spectrum as well and with her it totally made sense because even as an infant she didn't make eye contact or oh. like all of the things right and it's um, and then I started to think, well, if I'm a three for three, <laughs> and there's a hereditary component, <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> maybe I should look into this a little more. Right. And uh, started, and I noticed a lot of the pa- the behavior patterns were the same between my kids and I, and uh, so I started attending the Asperger's support group. And so what changed for you then? In terms of things changing, not a lot. I found my stress level's gone down a lot Mm. since the diagnosis. Um, Just, I think, understanding that 
that there's a reason why I think differently than most people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's helped a lot. It's easier for me to say, oh, well, that's because <laughs> my brain's different. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That makes more sense. So it provides a bit of a, an answer to some stuff that maybe you didn't have an answer for or you knew was different. Well, I always knew it was different. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, it gave me a little bit of an answer. But in terms of other things, there's no... Mm -hmm. It's just been for my own peace of mind. Right. Uh, good for you. What about you, Kevin? My diagnosis? Yeah, I got officially diagnosed about three years ago. Mm. And uh, what a relief that was. Uh, my life constantly blew up on me. Wow. And it was just about to do it again. And uh, I thought, what's what's going on here? I could never figure it out. I knew I wasn't the same, but I didn't know what it was. I, I had lots of crazy theories that, I, that make no sense now when I look back on it, what was going on. But uh, yeah, it was my... My third marriage, and I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm like, why do they keep falling apart? Mm. And uh, so I did some real searching, and I looked it up on the internet, and I'm like, wow, I come across uh, autism. And uh, it just fit too well. So we had to go for counseling anyway, and uh, we ended up with um, Dr. Giesbrecht. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, not originally we got referred to him because he works with kids mostly i guess and uh he gave his opinion that that was probably what was going on which eased my mind a lot and after that there was a, a real sense of ease and i knew that uh maybe it wasn't i mean i was doing these things that caused my life to fall apart but once i knew how i was i didn't do them anymore because I'm Interesting. Like, like now I know and I was so happy and then I got officially diagnosed three years ago mm -hmm. so that's my story really in a um, small nutshell yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well and I'm sure there's so many more details oh, right oh yeah but but the well we're both old enough that there's lots and lots of details oh, tons, tons of details <laughs> sure. yeah no I I get it and and interesting i i love the comment that that well that you made especially kevin we we had another uh conversation a few days ago with another gentleman that um made the same comment that oh my god when i learned why i thought differently and saw things differently and reacted differently it was such a relief oh. everything changed yeah did you know that you were different before or how, how was that I knew there was something different with me. Um, I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I th I thought maybe I was some part of some cultural group that I didn't know about, or uh, I, I didn't even know what to think. I but I knew there was something not right, and some things confused me. Like I was always making people mad, mm. and uh, I got so used to it that it. I finally let it not affect me. It did, but yeah, you know. But I, I didn't know what it was. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. But I knew there was something. That's interesting. Yeah. And when I look back now, my life makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I wouldn't trade it. It's been a very interesting life. Mm -hmm. Very. Interesting. What do your What do your grown up children say about about the diagnosis and? Well, you know, that's one thing in a way that I'm a bit sad about. Uh, only one of them really accepts it. Mm. and uh, But we never talk about it. <clears throat> the only time I can talk about it is in support groups or with my peers. And, yeah. uh, you know, I don't have that currently because mm -hmm. the funding ran out. But I never talk about it really to anybody. I've told one person I worked with at work. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my close friends knows, but I just don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah. And what about your wife? Do you have conversations with Oh, yeah. With oh, her? she's great. Yeah. She's supportive. And yeah. uh, she knows where I fall down. Like, uh, the thing that's great is that I don't have to be on alert all the time, every day, trying to make sure I don't mess something up. Must, be, must, must have been exhausting. 
it was, but I didn't know it until until I didn't have to do it, you know. <laughs> but yeah, she she makes sure I don't forget things, uh, which I mean, I've kind of slipped into my real self. Like uh, before, I looked probably more normal, and when I'm at work, nobody suspects a thing. But I'm, I'm an expert at that. Wow. But uh, so so an expert at that. So ju- I just want to explain. Like so, an expert at coping, masking. Yeah. Like uh, it's hard to explain. Everybody thinks. I'm, I'm sure they think I'm completely normal, which I'm not. And I think a lot of them think they know me, but they don't, because I've figured out how typical people work. And I work around that mm-hmm. and uh, I provide what it is they need to interact with. And because I'm in a business uh, environment and I'm, I'm kind of like a non-player character, uh, uh, I'm not really part of the game anymore. I really never was, to be honest with you. And mm-hmm. so they're, they like me, they're comfortable, they tell me things. And, but yeah, they never would suspect. Mm-hmm. I know all this stuff. Isn't that interesting? Wait, is that? Do you think the same? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Wow. For for me, as I was growing up, I was, always had really bad wrong planet syndrome, and uh, just just felt like you didn't belong. Uh, living you, in a world of yeah. aliens. <laughs> wow. Nothing people did. Like everybody always behaved behaved unpredict- unpredictably. Um, I just couldn't understand how people were reacting to just about mm-hmm. any situation yeah. and for me I learned to shut up <laughs> interesting and uh, I learned to learn to shirt tail with people so I'd mm-hmm. find somebody who was pretty good at making their way in things and I'd just follow along grab onto their belt and just <laughs> mm-hmm. let yeah. them lead me around and uh, I got led into some pretty bad places now and then but mm-hmm worked out pretty well for the most part and then uh, yeah when I'm at work it's it's very different I have my little niche areas and from spending so long quiet I'm actually a really good interpreter between business requirements and technical requirements mm-hmm. so I'm it's most of my job is I'm the guy that talks to the business and talks to the techies and right. I speak both so that's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah, and that's that's really been my strength. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it, and again, masking. It's mm-hmm. I'm in a corporate environment. It's a good word. I have my mm-hmm. my little specialist area that I can I can be an expert in, mm-hmm. and people actually want to hear what I have to say about it, and um, and we go from there. Yeah, uh, you were talking about. Your with your relationship with your wife, yeah, um, yeah. I kind of found the same thing, right? Like my wife and I were starting to kind of butt heads a lot about some of the the traits I have. Like she would get upset that I don't look at her, mm-hmm. and uh, that I don't answer rhetorical questions and. Um, And generally do a lot of the little social interaction things that are supposed to make things easier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, now she understands how hard I work to hit the level that I'm hitting with wow. those communications. And that has helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Helps now that our kids are a little older too and they're not sure. ignoring her 98% of the time. Yeah, <laughs> wow. And do you do you have those conversations with your kids about autism and what that is? We and do. We talk yeah. about it. Um, I think they just kind of started to realize maybe a year or two ago that that I had autism as well, mm. but only because I told them. <laughs> and the reason I told them is because they started using it as an excuse. Okay. And I can't do my homework. I have autism. <laughs> so do I <laughs> I struggle with homework too but I get it done <laughs> yeah. 
you know, I'm I'm glad that I didn't know. Mm. I think about it now, and I think back in the days when I was like I was, and I was pretty hopeless. If I'd have known, I I might have leaned on it. Wow. Well. But I didn't know, and it was pretty rough. But I powered through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that a lot too. Yeah. That's, it was it was hard, but it would have been easy if I had a an excuse yeah sure. yeah I, I wonder sometimes if I would have done the things I did had I known but I don't think I would have mm. I would have the life I have I just wouldn't have had it yeah I still think I would have I kind of gra- gravitated more into an area that made sense to me mm-hmm. um, an area where I was dealing more with computers instead mm-hmm. of with people, humans, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had uh, had a job working for an oil field equipment rental company, and I spent twelve to fifteen hours a day alone in a truck, mm. driving from rig to rig. Then I'd get to the rig and I'd work for an hour, and I'd get back in my truck and I'd go off to the next rig. So that worked for you? Oh, it worked really well. I loved it, yeah. except when I hated it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting. So, so you're a musician. You yes. play music. Is that so? Sometimes um, folks with autism or on the spectrum sort of have niche areas, right? Mm-hmm. So, is there would music be kind of one of yours or? Yep. Yeah. Actually, to be honest, uh, music is what basically I was don't want to be too dramatic. It saved my life, but mm. it it made it possible for me. To become who I am. Interesting. Yeah, like uh, I took off when I was, I don't know how old it was, 28 or whatever, because I always liked music since I was a kid. And uh, I learned how to play guitar in about two or three weeks. And um, I remember the first five or six years I was out on the road, like I just took off with a band, went in the bus, and then I was gone for like. 18 years or something. Wow. <laughs> but uh, the first five years, I would be on the stage and it'd be so perfect. It was great. And I thought, yes. And then the second I came off the stage, it was like a curtain fell and I got this feeling of dread and I couldn't mm. couldn't even hardly look at people. And then uh, one day, I got off the stage and it was just, it was gone. And it never came back. I wasn't scared of anybody anymore. Interesting. Yeah. So I think music helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Still playing in bands now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you you like to write. You've I do like to write stories yeah. and published. I've had published stories and songs recorded. Uh, got a video. I didn't write that song that that our video is, but uh, yeah, I like that artistic yeah. stuff. And well, numbers too. I mean, I add up my groceries as I pick them up in the store, and I, if I'm off by more than 10 or 15 cents it's like I didn't succeed <laughs> oh my gosh that's, yeah, that's just a hobby fun <laughs> a hobby I love it yeah uh, like that, but. and so Paul you were saying your daughter is a writer as well yeah yeah she loves to write she's yeah. packing in every creative writing class that she can get her her little scholastic hands on yeah and she's taken a couple of creative writing classes outside of college uh, she's DMing for her new Dungeons and Dragons group that she's putting together, and uh, it's funny she's been recruiting my my youngest. Actually, he's getting into it as well, mm-hmm. but she's been recruiting him to help her practice how to run a, a battle and an encounter. Oh, so nice! Jeez. Yeah. That's awesome. So it, it's very targeted for her. Yeah. <laughs> It's not just let's play. It's I need to see how this monster reacts to things. Sure. And <laughs> wow, yeah. that's that's interesting. Um, what about your families of origin? So your parents, your siblings, are they do do they do they well obviously know about the diagno- your diagnosis and and how you see things a little bit differently? How do you have conversations with them? Do they where how does all that fit in? Oh, I I think the force runs strong in my family. Yeah. Uh, 
We're pretty sure my younger brother has fairly profound autism as well. Mm. Um, he's smart as a whip. It's, I'm reasonably smart, and I don't hold a candle to him. It's, he's the one I go to when I want to know stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, But he can't work because it triggers his, his anxieties too yeah. much. And, uh, and my dad, I'm quite certain, has had autism all his life and learned ways to cope with it. Yeah. Um, he's also gone into very solitary occupations and, uh, when he's on, he's on, but he's not on very often. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we have a... Not a close relationship, but a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk every few months, and uh, conversations are about thirty seconds most of the time. <laughs> but uh, uh, but I like him. I got to understand him. Sure. I actually wanted the oil field job that I was with. He got me the job because he had a license suspension and needed somebody to drive for him, and. Uh, so we spent three months locked together in the cab of a truck. Wow. <laughs> well, that develops a relationship or not, 15 right? 15 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well. yeah 18 years <coughs> on the road with four other guys on the bus. <laughs> that works too. Yeah, no kidding. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, yeah it was. And, and what about your family, your parents, your siblings? Well, you know what? They're, they're all gone now. Mm. I'm the only one left, but... Mm. My dad, he, he left when I was, passed away when I was five. Mm. My mom, I'm sure, looking back, I'm sure she was autistic. 100% sure now. Uh, I'm not certain that my brothers were. Maybe the one just under me was. The other one, he had other difficulties. Mm. And he just passed away, actually, uh, this year. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. But... Uh, yeah, it definitely is in the family. It came from my mom, I'm sure of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure it's passed on for me, although I don't want to speak for others. Yeah. But uh, you know what's interesting? The family I have now, it's it's an extended family with Marion. Uh, that's my wife. And a lot of our friends, they have been <coughs> diagnosed. Some have been, but it's as if autistic people are drawn together. Mm. Like... All of our friends are a little bit out there. They're just great. Interesting. But, uh, so that's my family. So that's, there's lots of autistic people yeah. in my circle of yeah. family. Yeah, I noticed since my diagnosis, I see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah well, once you know, yeah. you can't miss it. <laughs> yeah, you can't not know, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. it's a different, a different language or something. Yeah. I don't know what it is. You can just tell. Yeah. Interesting. I've, there's a shape of the face I find. Yeah. Um, I find that people with autism tend to have very pear shaped faces. It's mm. the forehead comes straight down yeah. and then out around the cheeks and then around on the bottom. Um, that's a big tip off for me. Really? Um, and it's to an extent that people who aren't don't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, I see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I've asked a couple of people straight out. To say, <laughs> so, are you? A, do you have Aspergers? <laughs> and do they readily admit it to you? Um, if, I've had yeah. Do they tell you mind yeah, your own business? Said, no, no, I've never yeah. had anybody say mind yeah. your own business. I had a couple of people say, well, not diagnosed, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't ask very many people, but mm-hmm. there's been a couple where I just talk to them for a while, and I'm like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. We, it looks like a duck and it quacks like a yeah, duck. It yeah, it must be, right? Yeah. And we don't mind direct questions. Yeah, I, exactly. You know, yeah. Doesn't bother me which you Yeah, ask. yeah. You, um, I'm not sure, and I apologize, one of you had, um, oh, it was you that had mentioned anxiety yes. um, with, your, um, with your brother. Do, um, can you talk a little bit about mental health and your own kind of... Well, uh, I can talk about my that. own. I don't want to talk yeah. about his. Yeah, no, of course. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've struggled with anxiety. Mm-hmm. 
my whole life. Yeah. Um, because I was always, always, always trying to figure out what other people were, what other people's motivations were, why are they acting the way they're acting, how are they going to respond if I speak, maybe I better not. <laughs> mm, sure. Um, <clears throat> I became conscious at a really young age that I like to talk about things that other people didn't want to hear, mm -hmm. so I stopped. Mm -hmm. um, Interesting. And I'm a big guy, but I got really good at hiding in the shadows and listening. <laughs> I learned a yeah. lot of things by yeah by hiding in the shadows and waiting for conversations to finish. But, Interesting. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's been it's been really difficult. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing my children go through a similar thing. My daughter is very much in the well. The world is stupid. Mm. But I went through for a long time too I still feel a lot but uh, I realize I'm not the one to change it now and uh, she hasn't figured that out yet yeah. so but yeah just any time that you have a huge gap between what you are and what you think you're supposed to be it's going to create anxiety sure that's a, that's a act that's a very profound statement yeah, what you are and what you think you're supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, wow. yeah, I've been, I've been on antidepressants for years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've gone through boats where I've had to take anti-anxiety medication. Yeah. And, and just very, very difficult. And uh, high school was terrible. Just terrible for me. I had a couple of, a couple of really good friends who are also almost certainly on the spectrum but haven't been diagnosed. Um, and that was it. <laughs> I had a few, like just three or four friends and just kind of did everything with that same group. Yeah. And, uh, but it made lots of things difficult. It mm -hmm. made dating really tough <laughs> um, yeah. for two reasons. One is fear of rejection, but also binary thinking. I mm. Somehow had it in my mind that if you ask somebody on a, out on a date, you'd better be prepared to marry them. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so it, uh, I didn't want to make the choice. I, yeah. I'm not ready to choose for the rest of my life. Uh, so I'd never chose anything. I didn't date at all in high school. Or, um, then in college, I started to find some women who were interested in me, and they asked. Mm -hmm. That made it easier. So. Sure. Interesting. How about you, Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> anxiety stuff? Oh yeah, I still get anxiety. Um, for me, I like to have things planned. I like to know what's going to happen and what I'm going to do and what the result will possibly be. And uh, it's just the way I am. But uh, when things don't go the way they should, I get this crushing feeling that very stressful but uh, and I do my best but uh, it's really hard to power through it the, the way I deal with it now it doesn't it happens semi regularly but only for a few days mm. then it'll resolve itself and then I'm fine uh, when I was younger it was a lot worse like I didn't know how to make friends or how to make people like me and uh, you know, I ended up <clears throat> with some people I shouldn't have, I suppose, did stuff that wasn't the best. Uh, it was very stressful. You know, the mm. stress is much better now, but it's it's never going to be gone. Yeah. And you just learn to live with it, eh? Do you, do you find you really need to plan things? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually went the other way. I, it stressed me out so much when things didn't go according to plan that I just stopped planning. Wow. Well. And I said... You know, people will ask me, what's your plan for this? Well, I'm going to go to that concert. How are you going to get there? I don't know. I'll go. <laughs> Who are you going to go with? I don't know. Whoever wants to go. And I found that I had to do that because I got so worked up if people weren't on board with the plan. And especially in married life mm -hmm. where it was... Um, where it was always 
make a plan and somebody would be sick or we'd be late and I'd be standing at the door yeah. five minutes before we were supposed to leave and nobody else was dressed or <laughs> at all ready and, mm -hmm. and I'd just be fretting and, and, and upset about it and uh, so now I just say all right tell me what we're doing and I'll be there and ironically, I have a planning job, so... <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I do plan things, and I've gotten used to the stress, but I think about some things I planned, and then I, I wasn't able to go through. For some reason, it popped in my head this one time. Got invited to, I don't know, it was a buddy from the band, New Year's at their place. But my girlfriend didn't want to go. Mm. So I thought, okay, I'll just go by myself. And I got there and I just, I sat there in my car and then I couldn't open the door and I could see them inside the house partying and stuff. And I sat there for about a half an hour and I just couldn't do it. And I left, mm -hmm. you know, so plans don't always save you, but uh, they came in super handy when I did finally decide to get a real job. Worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find I can plan all right for other people. It's, yeah. But uh, similarly, I can predict what other people are going to do oh, in yeah. relation to each other, just not in relation to me. That's pretty easy. Hmm. Pretty easy to tell what people are going to do. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Except when I'm involved. I can't, can't well, predict it if I'm involved. Well, yeah, no, with you, <laughs> it's different. But you're, you're like one of us. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a club. Well, it kind of is, it's <laughs> weirdly, it really feels a bit like yeah. it. Well, it feels comfortable, but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, man. When I got released into the work world, I couldn't believe it. Like, I just couldn't believe it was, I was watching people walking around doing stuff. It felt like they were oblivious or something. And, and I'm like, whoa. Haven't you read the corporate handbook? And don't you know this is the procedure? And yeah. this and that. And I'm just like, okay. Let's flick through. And I just went, climb, 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 yeah. like that. And I'm like, I couldn't. I didn't even know that that's what I was doing. I was mm -hmm. doing it because I could. Yeah. And then when I got real close to the top, I'm, I'm like, how did I get here? And why did I even want to be here? It was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was nearly... 30, I was going through a lot of anxiety around work because everybody seemed to know what they were doing mm. all the time, right? And then, then it just kind of occurred to me one day, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, no, they don't. No. They're just really good at hiding the fact yeah. that they don't know what they're doing. Making it mm -hmm. up. And they've seen it enough times to know that they could deal with it when it occurs and that was a big moment for me and that was like I said just before I turned 30 and I was working as a, a swamper in the company I was at mm -hmm. and uh, shortly after I figured that out I was promoted to a field rep and that's when I was out in the truck I did that for five or six years and it was it was really good work for me but it was hell on my marriage because mm. I was on call right I was 30 days on call four days off or five days off oh my, my gosh that's a lot and when I was gone I was gone yeah. for a long time because right? it was the average rig is about three hours from yeah. from my home so it's three hours out and work for an hour three hours back wow. then the phone rings again that's yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's kind of what did in my first marriage when I decided that my job would be music. Mm -hmm. Took off. Well, Brooks was the first place we played at. I will never forget it. And then off to Saskatchewan, I was back a month later, but she wasn't there. Yeah, there was nothing in the house. Oh my goodness. So I just slept on the living room floor for two weeks. Wow. But you know what I mean? It's like, we just get used to that. Mm -hmm. Didn't really bother me it sort of did it did that uh, clutchy chest thing and then it's like well it's the way it is oh I shattered shattered when my first wife left yeah that was uh, 
It wasn't how things were supposed to go at all. No. Mm, it wasn't so, part of the plan. No. Yeah. I shattered. I quit my job. And took the money from the sale of the house. Went back to school for a couple of years. Mm. Started working with my brain instead of my back. Mm -hmm. it, took me, it took me years to put myself back together. Mm. Drank a lot mm. for those couple of years. And started to piece myself back into somebody that I liked. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> considering where you are now in your lives and, and kind of in, you know, the evolution of life, um, what advice would you have to your younger self, knowing what you know now? Do, do you have anything that you would say to a younger Paul or a younger Kevin that would maybe make it better or make it different? Wow. You know, <clears throat> like I said, when I was younger, I was not like this. I couldn't use a phone. I couldn't go to a restaurant. I, I couldn't hardly look at people. Um, I'm not sure if I could have said anything to myself that would have made me believe that it was true and that it could happen. <clears throat> But if I was going to say something, it would be believe in yourself and go for your dreams. And I would only pray that I took off on that road because I'm telling you the stories and the things I saw and did, the experiences I had, like, I wouldn't trade that for anything. So for all the, I wouldn't call it suffering, but the, uh, the life that was not typical for all of that, I mean, I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Well, I would just say believe in yourself and you're mm -hmm. a good person. And, mm -hmm. But I don't think I'd believe my, I don't think I'd believe it. Yeah, interesting, eh? Yeah. See, now I'd tell myself the lotto numbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's practical. That's a much better idea. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think for me, if I could make myself believe it, and I don't think I could, Interesting. Is, no, uh, no, I wouldn't have believed it. Is to say you're not as different as you think you are. Mm. Yeah. Why wouldn't you, because you both have said the same thing, why wouldn't you have believed it? Well, it's coming from somebody else, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Actually, uh, something you said earlier made me, about your daughter. I remember, and I was 25, and I never forgot it because <sighs> up until that point, I was pretty sure that, I was usually right, but pretty sure that I had my stuff together and I knew what was going on. But when I was 25, one day I thought, you know what, you're not always right. And it was a huge thing and I thought, what you need to do now is properly consider things and decide if you're correct in your thinking or if somebody else is and you can learn something from it. Mm. But it took me till I was 25 till I realized that I wasn't always right. So that must have caused lots of conflicts in your relationships. Sure, well, probably don't have to deal with that. <laughs> 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 Sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe, maybe it did, but <sighs> my relationships were not typical and mm -hmm. uh, like I, I hung out with misfits and I didn't even realize they were at all and uh, no idea mm -hmm. like I, I, I still can't tell really that when people are different I, I even can't tell if they're tall or short as dumb as that sounds mm -hmm. I mean I know you're tall but unless <laughs> I think about it I can't tell and uh I remember talking to one of the cousins who went out to visit the wife's family and she was, her and her husband, the most interesting people I'd ever known, I talked to for the trip and some of the most interesting I'd met. <clears throat> then afterwards I found out they were both um, mentally challenged. Mm. No idea. Couldn't tell at all. So actually that's one of the blessings for me. Like, I, I just, I'm like, you know, dogs, big dog, little dog. I'm sort of like that. Wow. But that's a gift, I think. Yeah. 
because I'm not faking it. I just don't really know the difference. Don't notice it. No. Yeah. Hmm. I'm Interesting. Happy. Yeah. I think another thing I would try to impress on myself is that people don't think about me as much as I think they do. Oh. And I think that's useful for everybody. I think we're all too concerned about that. But, I mean, people really don't think about you as much as you think they do. That's true. And it's, um, I mean, I got a lot of extra attention because of my size. Because I stop traffic. <laughs> 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 Sometimes. Um, but, uh, Really, nobody, nobody much cares mm-hmm. what I think about. I don't know taxation or mm. um, like it. It might make for an interesting conversation, but they're not going to dwell on it. Whatever I tell yeah. them, uh, yeah, people just don't dwell on you the way that you think they do. Yeah, and and I think that that is a really <laughs> valid comment for. And I think about those teenagers. Right, that are so you know worried about saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing or being noticed or uh, have all that insecurity and and is that what you're saying that right. that yeah. that it's it really isn't as um, significant. Huge, as significant as we think it is in those moments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, oh my God, if I wear mismatched socks, everybody's going to notice yeah. and I'll be ostracized and. Yeah. I, and that's that anxiety, that. right? But I went the other way, right? I had a uniform that I would wear um, all the time. What was the uniform? Uh, it changed. Uh, for a couple of years, I would wear a jean jacket with patches sewn on it. And I wore it whether it was plus 40 or minus 40. Oh. Um, then I had a, a denim duster that I wore, a long coat, and then I went full goth and grew my hair out and wore earrings and a cloak. And <laughs> wow. And for me, that was just, well, people are going to stare at me anyway, I'll give them something to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, but, <clears throat> but I knew a lot of people who were always so concerned about what people were going to think about what they wore and there are times when people are going to think about it I guess yeah. at a job interview um, on a date those sorts of things mm-hmm. those sorts of times right but day to day yeah for the most care. part they don't really care do they mm-hmm. I knew a girl in high school who uh, one day came to school in the middle of winter in a skirt and long johns. <laughs> and uh, nobody cared. Nobody yeah. said anything. Yeah. I knew another girl who wore a poodle skirt and sweaters. I wasn't in school in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Did you know, this reminded me of a girl with a long... Like, I didn't mention I was also a single parent. Mm. For quite a long time for my first two kids. And uh, <clears throat> I took, you know, parents take their kids on a field trip thing. So I was taking my daughter. I can't even believe it. I hate. That. I can't believe I'm even admitting this. But I had no idea about clothes, and she had some stuff she liked to wear because of the patterns. So I was oh, okay. Fine, wear that. It was her pajamas, but I didn't know. <laughs> so I took her on this field trip where she was wearing pajamas. Oh, <laughs> but I didn't know they were pajamas. Like, that's before I knew what was up with me, right? Yeah. But I would do stuff like that all the time. Yeah. In my wardrobe, basically, until I met my current wife. Unless I was at, at work, like uh, wearing a work uniform or before music wearing stage clothes I've just everything's gray I just had all gray t-shirts and gray sweats yeah. and that's all I'd wear yeah. same shoes until they fell off my feet sort of thing yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah. my wife makes me throw shoes out and my she, she'll make me you can't wear that anymore even after my shoes fell off my feet I'd take them up oh ah, okay, yeah. <laughs>
That sounds familiar. <laughs> no. In my case, it's partly because they're hard to find in my size, but... Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I just... I never cared. That's... I wear flashy stuff now, though. I love flashy clothes. Is that right? That's oh, neat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah, I got into uh, Hawaiian print shirts. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. When I was on the road, <clears throat> like, the... I used to go with my buddy. We'd go to the ladies' department. <laughs> I'd just find stuff that looked okay on a yeah, guy, but yeah. the guy's clothes are so boring. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Man, I was wearing it on the stage. So I figured, who cares? Yeah. Well, anything goes when you're up there, right? Yeah. 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 Jewelry, anything flashy, like yeah. pendants with, uh, like that sparkly stuff. Yeah. Man, I love that stuff. Wow. You were on stage, what, in the, in the 80s? Yep. Yeah? Yeah, so you could do so, whatever. So, uh, glam band time, right? Yes. Poison, yeah. Motley Crue. Oh, yeah. yeah. The long hair and... Yeah, I used to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah with all the, the high, big hair, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Van Halen. Big, it was and just long. Was it, yeah? I like, had it down to my belt. Yeah. Oh, my years. goodness. Wow. And my belt's a long way down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never had that, but... Oh yeah, I like dressing up. That's good. But I always have to take somebody. I I can't buy my own clothes because I don't know if they fit. Mm. I can't tell if they're tight or loose. Uh, the only thing I can tell, like this, I learned now. My wife got me to do this, but the sleeves got to be perfect. That's the only thing I know, and I can't have a tag. But mm. but I would always take my daughter with me when we used to live together, and then uh, now Marion takes me like. She just picks the stuff out because so, I'm useless. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Sounds like she knows um, she knows you well and knows what you need. Mm -hmm. And your wife too, Paul. <laughs> kind of, sorta. Kind of, sorta. Yeah. Um, when it comes to clothes, I just figure I'm like a blind man, mm. and. Uh, Every now and then I'll come downstairs and say, you can't wear that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, okay, go pick, stuff. go pick some stuff out of my yeah. closet and yeah. tell me what to wear. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I always check. Like, you now if we're, we're going out to a gig or something, <clears throat> I always say, how does this look? Should I wear this? Yeah. It's interesting to me that you aren't able to tell if it looks good or not. I can't even tell if it fits. Yeah. Isn't that something... Yeah, I do. It's weird. I don't know I how find that, that works. That's fascinating. It is, but yeah. it, I mean, I suspect there's something not right. Yeah. Well, when I get a favorite shirt or or something, I'll wear it till it falls off. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But uh, yeah, no. So for me, being married is that's an important part of it, of what I get out of marriage. Is, yeah. Is just saying, okay, well, go. Go find me something. She yeah. buys almost all of my clothes. Yeah. Because I just, I know I'm not going to get it right. So yeah. I just let her get them. And sure. I check the fit and see if I like the fit. Yeah. Yeah. Even my crazy shirts, I make sure they're not too crazy. Yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, this has been an absolute pleasure to learn about you and, and talk about you. I'm so excited that you have shared your stories with me and with us i i've learned so much about you i appreciate you being vulnerable and um and being um just being open to the conversation i'm uh, i'm i'm deeply humbled at uh, your time with me well, thanks for the opportunity yeah thanks